alive and he wants to do great things in your lives. He wants to bring you to a place of a place of, of strength, a place of, of honor, a place of power. Amen. This is the God that we serve. You know, I'm so excited to be able to come to you each weekday, each Wednesday, uh, midweek service to bring you the word of God, the revelation of his son, Jesus Christ. You know, we are on our 22nd episode on this particular lesson that we've been sharing. And you know, it's getting better and better every time we go through this lesson. Amen. It's not, it's not boring, but it's always something new that God is speaking to our hearts. And I so thank God for this opportunity to share with you God's holy word. Friend, I am so thankful for you today for joining us here at New Life in Christ Jesus. And Father, I just ask you that you just bless each and every one under the sound of my voice. Bless them right now, Father. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You know, we've been dealing with the book of Revelation. Amen. And chapter uh, 2. Amen. We've been dealing with chapter 2. And we have not been able to get out of that chapter. But I believe today we're going to uh, venture on over into chapter 3. Because we are dealing with the with the seven churches right now, and I'm gonna tell you something. There's a lot to be said, Amen. There's a lot to be said, and when you have a uh, the spirit of when the spirit of the Lord begin to lead and guide and and, and and feed your understanding, it causes you to I mean to really see what God is doing, Amen, and what He's saying. I want you to purpose in your heart today that you will hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you as a person, Amen. And then I want you as collectively hear what God is saying to you. Amen. So prepare your hearts to receive. Right now, I feel the power of God already starting to rest upon me. And so I'm going to just release my heart and ask God to use me for his kingdom and for his glory on your behalf. Hallelujah. And you that are viewed and listened by the Internet, we want you to uh, just open up your hearts as well. And hear and see what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Because, see, you wouldn't be listening or you wouldn't be viewing if God had not placed upon your heart to do so. Therefore, I believe that God wants to speak something into your lives. Amen. Those of you that are listening by the Internet and television, viewing us, amen. I want you to prepare your hearts as well to hear from heaven. Amen. So the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, and today we're going to start here because we, we went all the way down through verse 1 all the way through verse 18. Amen. Until verse, through verse 17, I mean. And today we're going to begin reading at verse 18 because we've dealt with the, the church of Ephesus. We've dealt with the church of Smyrna. We've dealt with the church of Pegamus. Amen. And so today we're going to start with the church of Tarathiah. Amen. And we're going to just ask God to help us to convey to you what he is saying to us in his holy word. Amen. Amen. So, and from, we're going to read from verse number uh, 18, and we're going to read through verse number 29. In other words, the, the, the rest of the chapter. Amen. From verse 18 through 29, it says, oh, I need my reading glasses right now. That's okay. Here we go right here. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. And so, when we're studying this, when we started studying this word, it's, I'm telling you, it has really enriched my heart. Amen. And We still serve the same God and the same Spirit of God that, that, that I'm baptized with. The same Spirit of God I receive as salvation, the same Spirit of God that you receive as salvation. Yes. Amen. So we're not looking at how good or how 
eloquent we are. We're just looking how well we can hear and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so, friend, I want to turn your attention right now to the book of Revelation, chapter 2. And let's look at verse number 18. And it reads, And unto the angel of the church at Terathyre, write, These things said the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet like are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works and the law and the last to be more than the first nevertheless I have nevertheless I have a few things against thee because thou suffered that woman Jezebel which called herself a prophet a prophetess to teach and to seduce and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulations except they repent of their deeds and I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the, the reins of hearts search the reins and hearts and I will give unto every one of his of you according to your works Verse 22, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 22 says, verse 24 says, I mean, but unto you I say, and unto the rest of Terathyr, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they spake, I will put none of thee, I will put none of you, I will put upon you none of none of, of the burdens, of other burdens. None other burden. Verse 25, but that which ye have already held fast till I come. But that but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. Verse 25 again, but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Till I come. Hallelujah. Verse 26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Hallelujah. And verse number, verse number 27, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of the potter, of a potter. Shall they be broken in sheaves, even as I receive of my father, and I will give him the morning star. Yes. Hallelujah. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, when I read the book of Revelation, I feel the Spirit of God just throbbing through my body. You know, and sometimes it just, it, it just shakes me all on the inside. Amen. But we are going to... We're going to just continue in this lesson because right now we're talking about the church of Terathyra. Terathyra was full of good works, but tolerated a false teaching. 
You see, they permitted a woman that was a false prophetess to speak into their lives and to lead the children of God astray. Amen. The city of Tyre was vital, was, was vital, was, was, was a vital uh, commercial and and trade a trade center. Amen. Located about 40 miles southwest of Pergamos. And you know, Pergamos, we just talked about it on last Wednesday night. Pergamos was who who remember what what, what uh, Pergamos uh, uh, stands for? What 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 that city stand for? What? Right. It was a it was a, a sinful nation, a sinful country. Amen. Pergamos was 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 a was a, one of those areas that what it calls what it what what it said where Satan's seat was. Okay. So you need to understand. You need to you know if you don't if you don't take notes. Uh, try to uh, go back and listen to these lessons again. Yes. Because, I, like I said, I'm going to say something that's going to speak to your heart. And uh, you, need to, uh, you need to have an understanding of what God is saying to you. There, 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 were, many, there were many trade guard, uh, uh, grounds, uh, guards which, are, which re require their members to participate in occasional pagan celebrations. Amen. See, because they were so close together, because Pergamos and Tyre Thyra are so close together, in other words, the both of these nations were so close together, they participated in some of the rituals or some of the pagan rituals, celebrations that they ex that they that the that the that the other uh, country was doing, the other nation was doing, which was Pergamos. Amen. So they were so, because they were so close together. When they had the rituals, or they, 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 the Christians, they had to either compromise or stand their ground. Oh, hallelujah! A lot of the Christians, because of their wanting to get along with people, or they wanted to be liked by the people, a lot of them compromised their relationship with God just to please people or man. Amen. And they, yes, right. They're still doing it now. Amen. Amen. But you see, Christian, Christian and Territory were faced with a decision either to compromise their, their stand and participate in some of the some of these uh, pagan festivals or to refuse to compromise and suffer the economic hardship. Economic hardship. What do you mean by uh, suffer economic hardship? If you didn't participate with these pagan rituals, then they would consider you as a an outsider or a threat. So they would not. Uh, they would not. They would not uh, allow you to purchase or whatever they was doing because you were not like them or one of them. Amen. And so. And so when we see this, when we see when we see this going on right here, we can see that this, that's, this, that's the way the world is geared around to even today. Amen. Amen. If you don't participate in certain things according to the world standards, then you are not going to be qualified to purchase certain things. Mm. Why? Because see, it's going to require a certain mark, which is called the mark of the beast. Amen. And so we have a we we have we, we have a great we have a great uh, uh, mission ahead of us, even as Jesus did when he walked the earth, amen. Jesus commanded the church here at Tarathire for it, he commended the church at Tarathire for his good works. He said, "I know thy works, and charity, and service." Isn't that what he said? I know thy works, thy charity. And listen, look at verse number 19. Second, is a Revelation chapter 2, verse 19. Revelation chapter 2, verse 19. And it says, I know thy works and charity and service and faith. And they, listen, and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. 
Amen. So, so and we see here that Ty, that Jesus re, he commended the church at Tyre Tyre here for their good works. He said, I, and, he, and, he, and he and he and he mentioned out. He called out all the things that he that he that he admired about them. Amen. And but but he said, but Christ who is described as having eyes like like a fire, like flames of fire, saw through their outward display. You see, even though they had good intentions, they had good things going on, yet the Lord was able to see their innermost being, their heart. You understand what I'm saying? He was able to see their hearts. Amen. Because the Bible says he had the eyes like his uh, his 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 eyes were like flames of fire, and he saw through their outward display of good works mm -hmm. and exposed the stronghold Satan was building right in their right in the midst of their church. Yes. Amen. See, that's what this is what the Lord is trying to show us now. We have to be firm. Not to give in to, to uh, seducing spirits, because let me tell you something. There are seducing spirits that are out there right now. And they're working hard overtime on the children of God. Amen. Trying to seduce them, trying to uh, get them into, into sin, and trying to uh, take them out of commission. Amen. And the only way you know you can you can you can say you can, you know you you being caught up in such thing you can look at it and say well I rebuke you in the name of Jesus now you just leave me alone yeah. well that's good but that's not going to be enough in these last days yeah. that's not going to be enough you got to be willing to go the extra mile yeah. if you want to be free if you want to if you want to stay free you got to be willing to go the extra mile what do you mean go the extra mile what did Jesus do what did he do to maintain his integrity what did he do to make to, to, to keep his strength. Fast and pray. He fasted and he prayed. Amen. Amen. He went and set himself apart and he consecrated himself to God. And when he come from his consecration, then he released the power of God. Why? How did he do that? Because he spent time with God. Amen. Amen. So we have to understand, if we're going to maintain in these last days, we got to know what it is to concentrate ourselves. we got to know what it is to separate ourselves uh, or push ourselves away from the table for, for, a, little, for a little bit. You know, they, oh, you, talk, you, you mean to me I can't have my chicken? <laughs> your barnyard pimp will wait for you. <laughs> your barnyard pimp, it ain't going nowhere. It'll still be there when you get done with your fast. Amen. See, God has called us, he's called us to be the church, not just to be a, a, a people. But he's called us to be the church that he created us to be. Yes. Amen. Amen. The church is a, is a, a the church that God created was a, was a, 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 it had great influence in the land. But the church we see today, it'd be, it'd be sad if, 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 if you know, they even say anything that would influence the people. But I'm so thankful that God, he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that, 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 that gave me an opportunity to accept his son Jesus as my Lord and Savior, the same God is able to keep me in these last days. And he's also able to keep you. Are you willing to give him that chance, that opportunity? Are you willing to trust him? Are you willing to go the extra mile and to spend some time with him in prayer, in fasting? Hallelujah. And so he said, now know what he said again about, 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 about the church of Terathar? He said, I know that he commended the church of Terathar, and he said, I know thy works, thy charity, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 19, Revelation 2, 19. He said, I know, that, I know that works, that charity, that service, that faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last of and the last to be more than the first. Amen. See, but Christ, he was looking at, he was, he was commending them for their good works. 
But notice he come right behind that and said, look at verse, look, look right here what it said. In verse number 20, nevertheless, I have a few things against thee, verse number 20. Nevertheless, I have a few things against thee. See, Jesus was able to see beyond their facade. Mm. Hallelujah. He was able to see beyond their religious uh, 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 ritual that they were putting on. Yes. He was able to look beyond their, their, their human the human flesh, and was able to see their hearts. And so this is what we have to be concerned about. We, uh, don't be concerned about how you look on the outside. You better be concerned about how you look on the inside. Because your inside is the one going to pay off one way or the other. So you don't, just because you look good on the outside, that don't, you know, you can, you can look good on the outside, you'd be one of the worst people you ever want to be around. It's your heart that God is looking at. Because see, his word is a discerner of the heart. Isn't that what it said in, in, in Hebrew 4.12? For thy word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the vital tongue, to the soul, to the joints, to the marrow, to the bones, to the heart. Amen. See, we are, we are, we, we are nothing without God. Our righteousness is no more than just filthy rags. Mm. But when we yield to him and we yield our heart to him, friend, we everything he created us to be. You see, Jesus saw what Satan was doing in their midst, the stronghold that he was building, that he was establishing right in the midst of the church. He continued his, his message by saying, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because Thou suffer, no was it, because thou suffered that woman, Jezebel, which called it herself, or what? A prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idol, unto idol, Rome, uh, Mr. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. See, it may all look good on the outside, but God, he sees, he sees the full picture. He sees the full picture, and God trying to help us to understand. We got to get our hearts right. Our heart must be right. See, the Church of Pergamos had opened had opened a door to uh, destruction by allowing uh, compromising compromisers to remain in their midst, and this is why they had this name. In this city, Satan's seat, because they allow themselves to be given over to adultery, mm. fornication, and all evil works. Oh my God. Amen. So the Church of Pagamus had opened the door to destruction by allowing compromising to compromisers to remain in their midst. Now, here at Tarathira, allowing compromising to remain in, in their midst, now that, amen, and not only were, not only were they allowing those, thing, those who were compromising with the world to remain among them, they were allowing a woman who called herself a prophetess to deceive, to teach, others and it was all right to mix to teach us that it was all right to mix pagan religion with Christianity mm. see that what Jezebel was teaching them that it was all right to, to mix pagan worship worship with Christianity in other words if you want to go to that orgy or that it's okay mm. <laughs> well I'm just telling you like it is because that's what it was going that's what was going on amen there was all kind of uh, of sexual sins that was taking place. Amen. Sacrifices on altars. Amen. Amen. And so and so she joined so she joining together all the all that was holy, the word of God, the name of Jesus, the holy standards of God with all that 
were corrupt and evil. This is what Jezebel did. She joined all the things that was holy, all the things that were of God, and all the things that was of Jesus Christ. It brought it all and, and mingled them both together. Because they looked at her as a what? A prophetess. And they trusted her. They believed her. But she was a deceiver. Oh, she came out of Messiah. Mm. But she was a deceiver. Amen. Throughout the Old Testament, this compromise, uh, this compromise, this union of the of the of the which the is holy and true with idol worship and immor immor oh my god. Yes. Immorality. My God. You see, God's standards is a whole lot greater than this world standards. And if we can hold God's standards, friend, let me tell you something. You are in a good place if you can keep the standards that God has set before you. You might go through some things, you might experience some things, but let me tell you something. At the end, you'll be, you'll be glad that you obey God. Yes. Because, see, them that compromise, oh, you might have been very fond of them, but they chose to go the way of the world. Amen. And now you see they are entering into a place in their life that they are totally out of control. Mm. What do you mean totally out of control? They have given themselves over to the spirit of Jezebel. They have given themselves over to the spirit of, of whoredom. And now that spirit that's in the world have captured them. Mm. My, my, my. Y'all need to hear what the spirit of God is saying to you. Amen. Amen. And don't be envy and don't be um, uh, 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 hard. Don't be. Don't allow yourself to become to become worried. Don't allow yourself to become to be hurt because someone wanted the pleasure of this world rather than the pleasure of serving God. That reminds me. Oh my God! I took that trying to take me off my 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 my, my teaching. I can't go off my teaching, mm. Amen. But I'm telling you that God is getting ready to do something, Amen. God is getting ready to do something here, Amen. So see, God is looking at our immorality, immor immorality, Amen. Uh, now let's see. He would not. He would. He would see. He would. He would not. Uh, let me just read this. Let me just read this right here. Throughout the Old Testament, our, uh, this compromise, this union of this holy one, of this holy and pure, and this pure with idol worship and immorality was considered by God as spiritual adultery. And he would not tolerate it. It was, see, if he didn't tolerate it then, what makes you think that he's just going to sit back and watch it today? Mm. If he did not tolerate it then, you know, and people will say, well, you know, somebody got to sin. No, you don't have to. You don't have to sin. You choose to sin. Amen. It's not something that you have to do. It's something that you choose to do. You don't have to go and commit adultery. You choose to go commit adultery. Yeah. You've already meditated up in your heart and your mind. You've already set your heart for it. Mm -hmm. Amen? You don't, you don't do something like that just because you think about it. You do something like that because you want to. Mm -hmm. Amen? But these people, they had a little influence. They had Jezebel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had a little influence. Amen? Now the church of Terathar, Christ warned to Christ warned of coming judgment to this false prop, this false teacher. 
And all those who compromise, who commit spiritual adultery with, the, with pagan idols, the false teacher in Tarathara had been given time to repent, but had refused, verse 21, had been given time to repent, but refused to repent. Notice what it says in verse 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. And she repented not. Oh, hallelujah. Are y'all glad y'all listened to here tonight? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now those who had been deceived by her teachings and had com compromised were given, now notice, they was given a choice. They was given a choice also. Amen. They could, they was given a choice to do what? To repent. Yes. They were given a choice to repent are to face the ultimate penalty, which is death. Oh, my friend. You see, we have to understand what God is saying to us. See, God, he saw the church of Terathira. He talked about all the good things that they did. But after he, after he finished talking about their good things, look at verse number 18 again. Uh, verse, number, uh, verse number 19 again, I mean. He said, I know thy works and charity and service. Revelation chapter 2, verse 19. And faith and, they, and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. But notice what he said, verse number 20. He said, notwithstanding, I have somewhat against thee. I have somewhat against thee. Amen. See, even though uh, uh, he saw all this stuff, but yet he still he still allowed them a space to repent. He allowed Jezebel space to repent, but she would not. And those that committed sin with her, those that committed adultery and fornication with her, they had a choice. They could either repent or face the final penalty, which was death. Friend, oh, what would, that's no, that's no, it don't take, a, don't, don't take a, a, a rocket scientist to figure that out. Right. Amen. I know what I choose. I choose life. Yes. Lord, I repent. Amen. And it's not, and God's not looking for performance with our mouth. He's not looking for performance with our mouth or with our gestures. Yeah, yeah. He's looking for a brokenness of our heart. Saying, God, I have sinned against thee. Forgive me. He is looking at every man, every woman's heart. Yeah. And he's calling us to examine our hearts for the things we have done. He's giving us space to repent. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you you are you are beginning to see why compromise is so deadly? Because see, compromise it started it starts real small. When you when someone begins to compromise, they may compromise over, you know, I told I, I told them that I wasn't gonna have a, a, a food today, but you know what? They won't. They, they they won't know if I had food or not. I'm going. I'm just going. I'm going to have me some food. I, I I told them I was going to fast today, but you know what? I'm not going to fast. I'm going. To, I'm going to sneak and have me a little bite to eat. And I'm going. To, when I get back around, I just put a sad look on my face. Like, how you? How you, you fast? Oh, I'm, oh, I tell you, I just oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so what you just did, you just lied. <laughs> In other words, you compromised. You compromised your position that you have agreed to do. And that little small compromise, all of a sudden, it became a big compromise. Why? Because when it was, when you was confronted, how was your fast day? There was another compromise came out, and it caused you to do what? To lie verbally. Oh, so sure, you, ain't that, you, ain't, you, you know what? I, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, amen. No, no, we don't. That's something. That's something we need to. We need to. We need to watch out for. We don't want. We don't want to cause someone to stumble by our actions. You see, they may not know our action, but God knows our action. And the same spirit that we operate, the same spirit that we walk in, the same spirit that we operate in, when we are speaking, our words are spirit. Yes, amen. And our words are full of life. They're going to give life to whatever spirit that is operating upon you or in you. Y'all need to, you know, just understand what I'm saying. Amen. And so prepare your heart. Prepare yourself for Christ's coming. Rid yourself of your compromise. It's time to begin to prepare for the Lord's coming. That's what Revelation is all about, you know. Prepare for the bridegroom to come for his bride. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the church today, most Christians are not as tempted and deceived into compromising, into compromising Christianity with worship of pagan idols as they are tempted into compromising with the world and its standards. Mm -hmm. How many of you know that This, even though you are, you are in this world, yet still you recognize yourself as a Christian, and it's hard. You know, it, it kind of you you kind of uh, uh, in a in a in a stable position right now, amen. But but when it comes to you know uh, the standards of the world, you're pretty strong in that area. But when it comes to uh, uh, moral issues, mm -hmm. that's where you got to watch out for your compromising spirit to come upon you. For the compromising spirit to come upon you. That compromising spirit will come upon you. If you do not be careful to hear what God is saying. See, God will give you a warning when that spirit begins to come towards you. <clears throat> and as that spirit begins to approach, God said, God said, son or daughter, step back. Go the other way. Exit right. But instead, oh, what is that? Mm. Huh? Ooh. <laughs> but see, this is what people think. This is what people act. This is what people do. They get caught up because they want to see. And this is when the compromise begins morally. Because their eyes saw something that got their attention. Then all of a sudden, they caught it. It, it just like sucked them right into it. Mm. You ever seen something that you, you know, you, you don't normally see all the time, and all of a sudden you saw something, then it just pulled you right into it. It made you want. It made you. It, it just captured your attention so strong, and you and you try to break away from it, but you find yourself going right back. Even after you break, you go back and look again. Mm. Is that really what I saw? <laughs> 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 is that what that is? <laughs> no, you got to watch yourself. That's a compromising spirit that is that is creeping into the church, and God is kind of, and God is telling the church of Tyre Thyre that I know that works. Mm. Not with what, not, not, not with that I have someone against you because you allowed that woman Jezebel that that called herself a prophet. Which is not a f but a false teacher to deceive my people. Mm. 
and to cause them to commit fornication and adultery. I gave it her face to repent, but she did not. But you that have committed sin with her, I'm giving you a choice today. You can either repent or you can face death. My God, that's kind of harsh. But that's what God is saying. Amen. That's what God is saying. It's harsh, but it's, that's the truth. Amen. It's the truth. Glory to his name. Amen. And then, he said that many Christians are not aware that they are compromising. Others are so full of spiritual pride and self-deception that their spiritual eyes are blinded from <coughs> seeing the, 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 the area in their lives where they have, com where they have compromised. You know, pride covers up a lot of things that someone really, they know they're doing, but because they don't want to see it, they allow their pride to put a cover over it. And they walk around as though they up here, in all actuality, they are here, spiritually speaking. Amen? Amen. And so we have to understand that when we, as God's children, compromises, it makes us to come down from our steadfastness and to come down to being brought low. Pride opened the door to three areas of a man, of a person's life, not just a man, but a woman also. It opened up the door to a, a, a destruction, loneliness, and shame. Three doors pride open up the, into a, a person's life. Or you can turn around backwards. Shame, loneliness, and destruction. They're still there. Either way you put them, they're still there. Hallelujah. You may be, you may be, you may be wondering, how am I going to be able to detect compromise in my life. How does compromise take hold in a person's life? What can I do to get rid of it? <laughs> That's a good one. To pray and fast. Amen. But what can I do to get rid of it? I will give you Four powerful keys to recognizing and getting rid of any compromise which you may have allowed in your life. As you prepare for Christ's coming, allow Christ to reveal any area of compromise and rid yourself of it. Get it out of your life. Refuse to allow any trace of it to remain. God is calling us. He's asking us, are you really going to take a firm stand for the kingdom of God? Are you really, are you ready, are you truly ready to put the spotlight on your heart? Are you truly ready to to give me your full undivided attention? Are you ready to, to say yes to me and no to pleasure, knowing that it's only for a moment, then it's gone, then afterwards the consequences of it? Are you really, are you really ready to, to say God, I may have done wrong, but I wasn't intend to. <laughs> Are you really say, God, please forgive me for my sin and take not thy Holy Spirit from me, even as David said. He recognized his wrong, and he went before God on his face. 
And he cried out to God out of a broken heart. His heart was so broken because he had sinned against God. But I believe he was just crying out because he got caught. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> but either way, he cried out. He cried out and he repented of his sin. Don't allow your sin, or don't allow sin, I'm not going to say your sin, because you don't have a sin. But sin is going to try to get you. Okay? But don't you allow compromise in your heart, especially if God has spoken to you and have given you instructions. This is one of the greatest deceptions that you can experience self-deceived. Thinking that you can do this, it's going to be all right because this is what I feel like I want to do right now. And I don't care who watching me. This is my time to enjoy myself. It's all about me. Mm. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and what I want. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, Tyre Thyre is, is is one of the is, this is this is one of the uh, one of the major one is one of the major cities. That God was talking about. And in this city, there was a lot of compromising going on. And this is why God spoke to them so harsh. Amen. This is why he spoke to them so harsh. And God don't want us to be self-deceived. He doesn't want us to allow ourselves to be deceived by anyone. He wants, he wants us to hear and obey him. Honor him. Amen. You know, right now, I'm not going to go no further. Because I'm finna go into chapter 3 of the book of Revelation. And I don't want to start in the chapter 3 of Book of Revelation because I'm going into another church. Mm. And I'm, I'm, we're going to wait till Wednesday. We're going to start on that church. Amen. Amen. And that's the church of Sidus. We're going to be talking about next Wednesday night, the church of Sidus. You notice every Wednesday night lately, we've been, since we got out of uh, the, the first two books, the first two churches, boy, it was a lot to discuss in those first two churches. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a whole lot. But these second, these these other churches, it's just enough for one service. Mm. But it's it's good and it's rich, mm -hmm. <laughs> amen. And so, uh, but next Wednesday night we're going to go to chapter three. We're going to be talking about the church of Sidus, amen. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is true. Mm -hmm. And God, we thank you for enlightening our hearts and our understanding. Father, I thank you for all those that are listening to us by Spricker Radio and those that are watching us on Justin TV and those that are viewing us on our Facebooks and our uh, all those areas, Father, that we broadcast, MySpace and Twitter and all those places, God. Mm -hmm. Father, I ask you that you would touch every person's heart where they are listening or viewing this program from. And I pray, Father, that that they will hear what the Spirit of God is saying to them, and they should their hearts be in a state of compromising right now, Lord God, that they will begin to examine their hearts, Lord God, else the penalty for sin will override their will and bring them to a place called death. God, I ask this in Jesus' name that you will help us to make a decision because you've given us the space to repent now. And help us to make the right decision in this area that we will not go headlong deeper and deeper into darkness, thinking that there's light at the end of that tunnel. The only light they'll see at the end of that tunnel is the pits full of fire and brimstone. But the light of the life that you give us is in you, Lord. Help us to reach out to you with a heart of repentance. And help us to, help us to acknowledge our wrong and, 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 and turn away from that spirit of pride that we will not be 
brought low, that we would not be put to shame, that we would not experience destruction in our lives. And Father, we thank you and we bless your name for what you're going to do. And God, help us to keep focus. And I know, Father, how the enemy is working against the hearts of your, your men and your women, trying to get their attention. But help them to stay focused, Lord, that they will not lose heart and fall away. Because I know, Father, in these last days there shall be a great falling away. But let it not be among us, Lord God. Help us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Help us to put on that whole armor daily, Lord God, and to walk worthy of the vocation by which we are called. And help us to see ourselves seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and not in this world. Father, we thank you. I bless your people. I bless them now. And I ask you, Father, to watch over them until we meet again on next Wednesday night. I bless your people, Father, until we come together again for our regular service on Sunday morning at 1130. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We will go down and take our tithes and offerings up. Amen. Glory to his name. You got something to put in that over? The Bible said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. God is calling us to accountability. To be accountable in every area of our life for the things that He wants to do in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you give today, remember that God gave to you first. And when you give, just release your faith. And I'm going to believe God with you for a manifold return to come back into your life. Because all things do work together for good to them that love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. So let's just trust him with all our heart and do what he asked of us to do. He said, give and it shall be given unto you good measure Press down, shaking together, and running over, shall men give it to your bosom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, we worship you. We praise you. We praise you, Lord God. I tell you, this message, was, it, it kind of spoke to my heart a little bit. Because I see God has given us A full picture of what he's looking for. Did everybody give the one to give? Yeah. Amen. Father, we thank you for this tithes and for this offering, Lord God. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we hold it up before you, Father, that you are touched, that you are blessed, that you are sanctified, that, Father, that it will be used for your kingdom and for your glory. I bless it now and I bless your people. Father, I ask you to bring them to a place where they will begin to experience abundance in their finances. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Y'all, I'm telling you, y'all don't want to miss Sunday morning and Sunday night because Sunday morning we're teaching on a, a wonderful message and Sunday night we're teaching uh, another wonderful message that will... That to help the uh, to help you to understand and to walk in the strength of that Sunday morning message, Amen. We're talking about your place up there where God blessing has been commanded on your life on Sunday morning, Amen. 
and and Sunday nights we and Sunday nights we're talking about going back to the basics of faith, to the basics of faith, Amen. So Sunday morning and Sunday night messages are very very important, Amen. It's very important because see you need to hear you need to hear this, and you need both of these messages. Because God is going to speak to your heart. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Well, anyway, you may be here today and you say, Pastor, I never give my heart to the Lord, but today that message spoke to my heart so strongly, and I know that He was you that the Spirit of God was talking to me. Pastor, I want to repent for my sin. I want to ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart, be the Lord of my life. That's number one. Number two, you might say, well, Pastor, I am a I have given my heart to the Lord, but I've not been able to live for God, so I need to rededicate my life to the Lord, and I need to I need the strength of God to help me to live for Him. Number three, you 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 you, you are a Christian, but you've never been baptized with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You ask for the strength, that's where your strength comes from, the power to serve Him coming through the Holy Ghost. Every child of God needs to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Because this is your power to be a witness for the kingdom of God. Amen. Number three, you need a place where you can go on a continuous basis to worship God. God said to speak to your heart and to let you know that he's calling you out of your darkness and he's calling you into the light. If he's calling you out of your darkness into the light, that means he wants you to be assigned to a place of worship where you can have the teachings on a regular basis coming into your spirit. That you will be strengthened, empowered from within. You see, your change is not going to be on the outside. Your change is going to start on the inside. And it's going to work its way to the outside. Amen. And so, there's four areas we're going to give you a call today. One for salvation. One for rededication. One for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And one for a church home. Father, I ask you right now that you prepare every heart under the sound of my voice. And as I lead them through these prayers, Lord God, God, should there be any under the sound of my voice that need to respond to one of these calls, I ask you, Father, that you would touch their hearts, that they will do so in obedience to you. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. You may be here today and say, Pastor, I've never given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I've always thought about it, but I've never actually really committed my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, uh, you teach on the book of Revelation, it made me realize that time is running out and I need to get my heart, I need to get things right with God. If that's you, you know that you need to make things right with God. You need to invite Jesus Christ to come in your heart to be Lord of your life. You finally come to the point where you believe that he is the son of God, that he died for your sin. Right now, I want to pray with you. Will you please raise your hand? If you're in this place today, you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I want to pray for you right now. Will you please raise your hand? Amen. Anybody? You never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Right now, you want to say, Jesus, I do believe that you are the Son of God, and I want to invite you into my heart. Will you raise your hand right now? I want to pray with you. Anyone? Amen. The second call is this. You hear today, you say, Pastor, I've never uh, been able to live for God, even though I gave my heart to the Lord, but for some reason, I don't understand why it didn't work for me. I need to rededicate my life to the Lord. Pastor, will you please pray for me? If that's you, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord right now, I want to pray with you. If that's you, raise your hand right now. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord. I want to pray with you. Anyone? Amen. <laughs> you raise your hand. <laughs> oh, for prayer. Okay. We'll get to you in a minute, little girl. <laughs> Amen. The third call is this. You hear today, you say, Pastor, I never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Pastor, I need this gift. The Bible said, and I shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon me, and I shall be a witness unto Jesus, both in Jerusalem and Judea and through Samaria, and unto the other parts of the earth. Pastor, I need the power to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Will you please pray for me? If that's you, yes, I will pray for you. Will you raise your hand? Amen. You need to, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You, need to, you want the power of God in your life. I'll pray for you. Raise your hand. Amen. The last call is this. You hear to say, Pastor, I need a church home. I need a, I need a place where I can learn the Word of God. I need a place where I can grow in the Word of God. I need a place where the Word of God is taught so simple where I can understand it. Pastor, I like the way you teach. I want to be here with you and your people. Pastor, if, if, that, if, if that's all right, you, you please pray for me. If that's you, you look for a place that you can worship God in. I want to pray for you. You, pray, you raise your hand, please. Anyone, you want to make this your church home? Amen. I gave four calls. I gave a call for salvation. I gave a call for rededication. I gave a call for baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I gave a call for a church home. Three, four areas that I gave you a call. Anyone, it's not too late. 
anyone. All right, let's go into the next place, next next phrase. Then, you hear today you have a special prayer request, and you want me to come in agreement with you. Then I will pray with you, and I will uh, come in agreement with the Word of God and apply it to your life. Amen. As God apply it to your life, we will come in agreement with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Elizabeth, and I pray, Father, for Lydia. Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would touch, minister, that you would release the anointing. I, I pray, Father, that the anointing be released right now, and from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Yes. Father, I pray, Father, that you would touch, minister, set free in the heart, yes. set free in the mind, set free in the will, set free in their emotions. Yes. And God, I ask you, Father, to let healing begin to manifest right now from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I release that anointing right now in yes. Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you for divine health and healing in their bodies. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, Lord, and as my brother stand in the gap for his friend, Brother uh, Richard, God, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you would touch, that you would minister, to Brother Richard, Lord God, that you would strengthen him for the things that is taking place right now. Father, I ask you, Lord God, to move supernaturally upon his heart, God. And God, help him to be strong right now. And God, I give you glory and I give you praise. But let your kingdom come and let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I give you glory for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for my sister and her, and, her, and her husband, Lord God. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will move supernaturally in their midst, Lord God. Father, I ask you, Father, for a spirit of repentance to rest upon this family. Oh, God, I ask you, Lord God, that you would move swiftly, Father. I say, Father, let your kingdom come forth in, this, in, in their midst. God, reveal the things that are hidden, Lord God. Then, Father, as they are being revealed, let the godly sorrow begin to break forth in their hearts. And God, as the godless sorrow begin to break forth in their hearts, let there be a spirit of forgiveness, Lord God, to be released among them, that their hearts may be mended, Lord God. Father, I thank you and I bless you for it right now in Jesus' name. Father, what the devil has meant for evil, God, God, I ask you that you would turn it around for your glory. Father, bless this family, touch this family in a very loving and a compassionate way. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray for Michael. I ask you, Father, that you would touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. God, I don't understand this sickness that he's experiencing right now, Father, but I know who's the author of this sickness. And I have rebuked this demonic force right now that is coming against his life, that has come against his health. I rebuke it off of him right now. And, Father, I release the Spirit of God to begin to rest upon Michael. And God, I give you praise and I give you glory for it, Father. And God, I thank you, Father, for healing his body right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Then let us all stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this time together tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Father, we ask you that you will continue to lead, rule, guide, and direct our steps. That even though we might walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that we will not have to fear the evil thereof. For thou art with us, O Lord. Your word and your spirit, they comfort us. God, you have prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. We thank you, Lord God, that you shall keep us as we continually abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We bless you and we glorify you. We thank you for this time together this evening. In Jesus' mighty name, I bless your people. And Father, I command angels to go with them as they leave this place. 
that if they need to, they will manifest themselves that the people will arrive to their destination safe and sound. And God, I give you glory and praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining us today. And I pray that God minister to your heart continuously. Amen. See you on Sunday. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And I pray that the word of God was rich and bless your heart as it did us here at New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. May he be glorified in your lives and in your hearts. Until that day, God bless you. We'll see you again on our next service, which will be Sunday morning at 1130. God bless you. Bye-bye.